Hello boys and girls, welcome back to another lesson in Algebra 2. This is Mr. Bean, and I will be with you for the next few lessons talking about different types of systems of equations and solving those things. So to, in today's lesson, we're going to review some things from Algebra 1, uh, which is solving systems of equations, how we solved them by elimination, by substitution. So hopefully that part of the lesson will be pretty quick for you as we review those things. But then we're also going to talk about how to solve nonlinear systems of equations. Remember, a linear, that just means we're talking about lines. So we're going to do ones that are not just lines and how we do that, which is actually going to be the same thing as just using regular old substitution here. To start us off, let's review some things. Do you remember how when we solved things in Algebra 1, we'd have two lines, and wherever they crossed, this was considered the point of intersection, and that was the solution to the system. So a system meaning we have more than one, so two or more equations. So we could have one solution if the two lines cross. Or we could have no solution because maybe the lines are parallel and they never, ever cross. So we'll see those today. Or if there was an infinite number of solutions. And that's just because the two equations represented actually the same line. So you might have two equations, but when you draw it, it ends up being the exact same line. So how many places do they cross? They cross an infinite number of times. All right, those are the three types of solutions we could have had when we were dealing with linear equations. The main point being that the solution is where these graphs cross. So if the graphs cross more than once, then it could have more than one solution. But let's start off with just lines here and remember how we did elimination. So elimination was where we could add up the equations. If we could just add this thing straight down and get either the x's to cancel right there, or maybe we could get the y's to cancel. In order for them to cancel, they had to be opposites. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to change my color to red. I am going to multiply the left side right here. Let's multiply it by a negative 2. And then I'm gonna, if I do that to the left side, I have to do it to the right side. I'm going to multiply that by negative 2. All right, let's write the result of multiplying down here. Negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 10x. Negative 2 times negative 9y is a positive 8 y and then that equals negative 24 times a negative 2 is a positive 48. Now I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the second equation as well so I get a 4x minus 18y equals negative 6. Okay here's how we know that we did it right. I'm going to change to a highlighter here so you can see this. We did it right if this right here if we have a term that is going to cancel. So our variables 18y and negative 18y, those things will cancel now when I add these two equations up. So I'm going to draw a line here, plus, hopefully this is starting to come back to you as you watch this, this and this will cancel, and I end up with a 14x. This is gone, so it's just 0. So I'll just say equals 42. Now I can divide both sides by 14, divide by 14, and we get that x equals, 14 goes into 42 evenly, it goes in three times. So now we know the x, what is the y? I can choose any equation along the way here. So how about, uh, I'm going to choose that equation right there. So I'm going to say 4x, so 4 times 3, minus 8. 18y equals negative 6, and 12 minus 18y equals negative 6. Subtract 12 from both sides, negative 18y equals negative 18, so therefore y equals 1. So my solution is 3 comma 1. That is the entire solution. It's both of those put together because I'm looking for the point where they cross. So this would be an example of the situation where we had just the one solution. You have two lines and they're crossing at the coordinate point 3, 1. Okay, so that was our first example elimination. Let's try it again. For this problem, why don't we try and get rid of the x's? If I just multiply this one by a positive 2, so I multiply the left side by 2, I can see here this will become a 4 and then it will cancel. If I multiply by the left side by 2, I have to multiply the right side by 2. So just be careful of that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this over here. So now my new system is 4x minus 6y equals 8. 
multiplied everything by 2. And then the second equation, nothing changed. So I have negative 4x plus 6y equals negative 8. OK, so watch this magic. When I add these up together, everything ends up canceling. 4x minus 4x is gone. Negative 6y plus 6y is gone. 8 minus 8 is gone. So that leaves me with 0 equals 0. What do you do here? If you remember when the variables cancel, so there's no variables. That's the important thing. No variables and the equation is true. So if this statement is true and all variables are gone, whoops, true, then the answer is infinite solutions, infinite, infinite solutions. If these two numbers did not equal each other, right up here, if they didn't, if it was false, then you'd say no solution. So when all the variables are gone, you're going to either have an answer of infinite solutions or no solutions. And that just depends on whether this equation equals each other or not. All right, one more of elimination, and then we'll move on. Uh, and that's because sometimes you've got this weird, crazy situation where you need to completely rewrite it. So get this written down first as the example. 9 minus 2y equals negative 5x. Go ahead and pause the video if you need to and just get that written out. And then we're going to now rearrange stuff. So I'm going to take this negative 5x and move it over to the left of the equation. So that's going to make it a 5x minus 2y equals, and I'll take the 9 and move it over to the right side. So that makes it a negative 9. So you can see I'm rearranging it so that I can line up all my x's and y's. So negative 2x is on the left side. I'll leave it there, negative 2x. The 3y, I need to bring that over. So this is now going to be minus 3y equals negative 4 is on the right, so I will leave it there. The constant is on the right side. OK, so now the bummer is not only did I have to rearrange it, but I have to multiply both equations. This is a bummer. So how about I'm, since this is a positive and this is a negative with the x's, how about I just multiply this one by 2, and I multiply this one by 5. Can you see what's going to happen? 2 times 5 is 10. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. So they will be opposites and cancel. All right, so now just be consistent. If I'm over here on the right side, if I multiply left on um, 2 by the left, then i got to multiply 2 on the right. And on the second equation, if I multiply by 5 on the left, I hope to multiply by 5 on the right. OK, so now let's rewrite the equation one more time. And we get, or the whole system, I should say, 10 x minus 4y equals negative 18. And then I have this second equation, negative 10x minus 15y equals negative 20. OK, now we can add this up. So the 10x minus 10x will cancel. That's nice. And then we have left uh, negative 19 y equals, here I have negative 38. OK, divide both sides by negative 19. And you get that y equals 2. Goes in evenly. And if I know that y equals 2, what's the x? Uh, ba -da -ba -da. Any equation up here is good. So I could, I could really I can use any of them. How about, I'm, I'm just going to use, uh, let's just use this first one right here in blue. So I'll say negative 2x equals negative 4 plus 3 times y. And y, we discovered, was 2. So I'll plug a 2 in there. So again, I just took the second equation. And you can take any of them. You'll still get the same answer every time. So negative 2x equals negative 4 plus 6 is 2. Divide both sides by negative 2. x equals negative 1. So there's my answer. Negative 1 comma 2. There is the coordinate point of where these two graphs, the two lines, cross there. Next up, for the second half of our lesson, we'll talk about substitution. Uh, so let's make sure we get this down real well on the lines, because the number 6 example is not going to be a line. So in substitution, you get to choose to solve for a variable. You can choose for the first y, the second y, the first x, or the second x. It does not matter which one you choose, but there's probably an easier one. For example, in this first one, I think this x right there would be the easiest one to isolate, because it's one step. Subtract the 3y, and you're done. 
Okay, so if I subtract this 3y, I'd end up with x equals negative 7 minus 3y. Now, if that's what x equals, we can then plug it in. So this whole thing right here is going to, in fact, I'll put a box around it. That whole thing is going to get plugged in to that x right there because that is what x equals. You substitute it in to the other equation. Some of you are like, oh, yeah, I remember doing this. Good. Here we go. The minus first, negative. Now, what gets plugged in? This thing right here, negative 7 minus 3y. It's, it's what x equaled. And then we keep going with the rest of that equation. Minus 2y equals 7. And then distribute the negative. 7 plus 3y minus 2y equals 7. Subtract 7 from both sides. And then these combine. So 3y minus 2y is just a y equals. Subtract 7 from both sides, we get 0. So y equals 0. That's good. That's OK. That's a number. Don't freak out when you see this 0 here. Now we just need to know what x equals. So we can just take this equation right here. x equals this, blah, blah. Let's plug a 0 into that y. So x equals negative 7 minus 3 times 0. That's 0, so x equals negative 7. So my final answer is negative 7 comma 0. There is the coordinate point where there these things cross. OK, I want you to pause the video for number 5. Try this one on your own, and then uh, let the video push uh, play again once you're done so you can see what the answer is. If you did this one correctly, you should have come up with no solution. All the variables end up canceling. There's nothing left. And you have an equation here that is not true, 14 equals 1. Since that's false, then the answer is no solution. And all that means is that these two lines never cross, meaning they'd have to be parallel. So they just don't cross, and so you're at no solution. OK, let's do one more example. Now, this is the stuff that's going to be a little new. You want to write this down, x plus y equals negative 2. So we have a line. And then we have y equals x squared minus 4. This is a parabola, if you remember those. So we're going to graph the two of them for this example so you can get a little bit of an idea of what is happening. So go ahead and write this down. I'm going to start off by graphing the parabola here. So we have a y-intercept of negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I'm growing my coefficient is a 1. So I'm going to cheat and use this special method called 1, 3, 5. I go up 1, I go up 3, and then I go up 5. It's a little secret thing. 1, 3, 5 is kind of nice. You go up 1, up 3, up 5. When the, and the next one would be up 7, up 9, when the coefficient is a 1, leading coefficient for a parabola. OK, so there's my parabola. Let me see if I can sketch it. OK, close enough. It's kind of squiggly. And then let's graph this line. So what is this equation? If I rewrite it, uh, I could find the intercepts, actually, but I'm kind of lazy, and I like I love mx plus b, so I'm going to go y equals negative x minus 2. So I have a y-intercept of negative 2 down here and a slope of negative 1. I'm going to do this in a different color so we can see these things crossing. OK, I cheated. I used a straight edge. All right, so there's my lines. So see where they cross? It looks like they're crossing right at these nice, perfect coordinate points. So my answer when I'm done solving this thing, I'm just kind of getting ahead of myself. By looking at the graphs, we can see that the answer should be negative 2 comma 0. And the other solution, since there's two of them in this case, would be 1 comma 1, 2, 3, negative 3. OK, so that's our two solutions. That's what I should get if I use algebra to solve these things. And what we'll do is we'll use substitution. So if you look at back up at our original uh, system, we just need to solve for one variable. My recommendation for these is always solve this thing for y. Well, it already is solved for y. Because you can take this right here, this x squared minus 4, and you can just plug it in to that y in the other equation. So let's try it out and see what we get. So we'll take the first equation, and it's going to be x plus, now instead of a y, I'm going to plug in what y equals, which is x squared minus 4. And then this equals negative 2. Now we simplify this. Let's put the x squared in front, x squared, then the x term, x plus x. Now instead of a minus 4, I'm going to add 2 to both sides. 
by adding 2 to both sides, then I can say that this equals 0. And what that does, so x squared plus x minus 2 equals 0. Now you're in a situation where you have a quadratic that equals 0. And there should be lots of ways to be able to solve this. You could, there's a whole bunch of different skills. You could just use the quadratic formula. I actually love the quadratic formula. But most of these that I've created, the problems, I tried to make them so that they would factor nice and easy for you. So this one factors to x plus 2 and x minus 1. And then that equals 0. So if that's the factors, then when we solve that, we're going to get x equals negative 2 and x equals 1. Hey, hey, look at that. x equals negative 2 and x equals 1. Ding, ding. That was correct. So now all we need to do is figure out the y values. And all you do for that is you plug in the x value. And it doesn't matter which equation you can plug it into. You can plug it into the x squared. You can plug it into the line. On most of my, my problems that I've given you, it's usually easier to plug it into the, the linear equation. So let's, let's, plug in, uh, let's plug in this first one, negative 2. So we get a negative negative 2 minus 2. That's 2 minus 2, and that's 0. And that worked. Because if I plug in a negative 2, I should get 0. OK, let's try the next one. So y equals, and then I plugged in this 1 right here. So I'm going to go negative, plug in the 1, minus 2. Or in other words, negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. And 1 negative 3, that worked as well. So those answers, I'm going to go ahead and box them now. Those answers are correct. OK, so on the practice, I'm not going to have you graph these, but I wanted you to at least see it in the lesson that you understand that's the visual. We're just seeing where do these two things cross, because that's going to come up in one of our lessons later on in this unit, and we'll use our calculators to be able to graph them. All right, rock that mastery check. This is Mr. Bean signing off, and we'll see you back in the next lesson.